Hello everyone, welcome again. In this lecture, we will do a couple of questions which are relevant to HCA F6 succession. Uh, so we'll quickly go through the questions. I'll just be telling you the important notes and important elements uh, of them questions. So I won't do any of these questions on the board. So I will just quickly go through the questions telling you important points because everything we have studied anyway. And so you, what you will do is that you will just quickly go through this lecture because I will be telling you the important points uh, and then you can recheck your answers. So when I say recheck your answers, so definitely what I want you to do is that when I say to you, when I will, I will tell you a question and then you, you can just open up your exam kit and do that question first. So what you will do is that you will do that question first then you will watch me tell you uh, the you know commentary on that and then you can recheck your answers as well All right so let's go ahead and uh, start our questions i'll just quickly go through uh, i'll just quickly share the screen with you please make sure that you have a bpp exam kit uh, in front of you which is relevant to finance act 2016 now, as you can see on your screen, uh, page 35 of uh, BPP exam kit relevant to uh, Finance Act 2016, which is the latest, uh, latest exam kit of uh, ACCF 6 taxation. Now, this exam kit uh, is relevant for exams up to March 2018, uh, like my lectures as well. Uh, so, you should buy the latest exam kit. Now, if you come to page 35 of your exam kit, uh, if you have the exam kit in front of you, that's fabulous. If you do not have, uh, you can just look at, uh, you know, look at the question from here. But uh, you won't be able to do it unless you do very hard. You know, you'll have to do a lot of hard work if you do not have the exam kit in front of you. So that's why I asked you to buy the BPP exam kit. So please make sure you buy the exam kit. Uh, and if you do not have the exam kit, then it's just better to just close this lecture and go into the market and buy the exam kit and then watch me again. All right, so assuming that you have the exam kit in front of you, please pause the video here and do this question, uh, which, uh, question number 96, uh, which was examined in June 2013. And uh, some amendments had already, made, uh, already been made uh, by the PPP exam kit. So uh, what you will have to do is and just try to attempt this question all right I, I hope that you have already mm, completed or at least tried this question so let's go ahead and uh, read the question together and I will tell you the some uh, some of the important points uh, uh, of this question so as I said it was examined in June 2013 as it says uh, on top of that uh, but definitely there are some amend amendments made uh, so just to change the few things which are no longer in our syllabus and uh, in a style of the question as well uh, and 29 marks uh, sorry 29 minutes are allowed for this question so first of all let's look at the requirements on the next page which is calculate John's income tax liability for the tax year 16 17 so he will we will have to do is uh, what we'll have to do is we'll have to calculate his income tax liability for our current tax year and part B, it says that uh, state the tax advantages uh, of a rental property qualifying as a trade uh, under the furnished holiday Latin rule. So uh, simply, he's asking uh, what are the benefits of FHL. So you'll have to list down the furnished holiday Latin benefits. And when it says three marks, so you will have to just write down three benefits of furnished holiday Latin, uh, which we have seen in the previous video. All right. So which are given in the notes as well. All right. So, what are the benefits of furniture letting? Uh, one benefit is that uh, you know it is, uh, you know, included. It is uh, included in the relevant earning for the pension contribution purposes. And another benefit uh, I can remember is uh, you will get the capital allowances uh, on that as well. All right. So you'll have to give the three benefits uh, of uh, furniture letting. Now, this part B, uh, if you look at the requirement of the part B, uh, what happens is that this requirement is not relevant to the scenario of the question. So, if anything happens like that, what you will have to do is that you do not have to read the scenario for, uh, in order to solve this requirement. So, what you can do is, without reading the scenario, 
uh, just write down the answer because it is not relevant to the scenario because some requirements are relevant to the scenario and others are not relevant to the scenario so first you what you have to do is just pick up the requirements where you do not have to go through the scenario and you can solve it straight away because this part B is just a bookish knowledge and you can just you know copy and paste from the notes so I would recommend you to do the B part first and seek your easy three marks very easy three marks all right <coughs> excuse me now come to the part uh, part A of this question and it says uh, calculate the income tax liability uh, of John now reading the question from the previous page uh, first one it says that uh, uh, John is employed by a company and following information is available for the current tax year 1617 so he's got some salary uh, which is a uh, gross remuneration and uh, it is over 200,000 uh, pounds in in this current tax year uh, he contributed 18,000 pounds into serfs uh, HMRC's uh, uh, registered occupational pension scheme so he has contributed so when I told you that when it is occupational pension scheme and when employees contribute in towards it uh, it will be deducted out of the salary so if employer has contributed then that would be exempt benefit excuse me so he has contributed 18,000 pounds into the uh, occupational pension scheme which is registered so it will be deducted out of the remuneration package uh, then it says uh, a company contributed a further 12,000 pounds on his behalf now this 12,000 pounds which was contributed by the company and uh, this will be exempt benefit now although this will be exempt benefit but you remember that there is the annual allowance as well now although this is exempt benefit but it will be included uh, it, it will be used towards the annual allowance limit uh, which is for our current tax year 40,000 pounds the next one it says uh, uh, during the period from uh, uh, sorry the contribution uh, uh, the company contributed for the 12,000 pounds on his behalf both John and Surf PLC have uh, made exactly the same contributions for the previous five years as well. Now, in this tax year, if you talk about, he has contributed 18,000 plus 12,000 pounds, so he has contributed uh, 30,000 pounds uh, in his occupational pension contribution. Now, limit which is allowed for our current tax year is 40,000 pounds, and it says as well in the previous years as well, he has contributed 30,000 pounds, same amount uh, for previous three tax years. You remember that when you have exceeded our annual allowance limit for pension purposes you can use unused annual allowance from the previous three tax years on a five for basis so you might have to use this information uh, in the later in the question all right uh, however he has not used the he has he has not exceeded the annual allowance limit so far anyway so and then the note number three it says during the period from uh, 1st of November 2016 to 5th of April 2017 so these are four months a uh, surf plc provided john with a petrol powered car so when it says petrol powered car so it means that uh, we will not have to add three percent extra which is only for the diesels it uh, had a list price of 28200 so this is a list price while calculating the benefit on the car uh, first we have to take is the uh, list price then we'll have to deduct if employee has contributed anything towards the car and remember there was maximum limit so we can deduct maximum of whatever the limit was all right now coming uh, sorry 28200 and an official uh, co2 emission of 186 grams now official uh, co2 emissions are more than 95 so when it is more than 95 remember the standard thing was a uh, standard percentage was 16% if it is more than 95 so 16 percent plus 185 it is 186 so we'll round it back to 185 so 16 percent plus 185 less 95 divided by 5 whatever percentage comes there we'll have to add 16 percent into it and that person will be applied to 28200 because he has not contributed anything towards the benefit so it, nothing will be deducted out of 28200 
all right so whatever the percentage is that will be applied to the 2800 and we will get the car benefit uh, on the next page a uh, note 4 please it says during 2013 a uh, soft bsc provided john with a loan so the uh, now it is a loan benefit i think uh, which was used to purchase a yacht so the amount of loan outstanding uh, at 6th of april 2016 was 84000 pounds uh, so 84000 pounds was the loan at the start of the year uh, john repaid 12000 pounds on 31st of july and then repaid 12000 pounds uh, on another date he paid loan interest of this much during the tax year 1617 so what would happen is uh, sorry read it uh, let's read the uh, let's finish reading this note so the taxable benefit in respect of this loan is calculated using the average method remember while cal calculating the loan benefit there were two uh, two different ways to calculate the benefit one was average method and another one was a strict method or accurate method all right now remember that if the question is silent we can choose the lower of these uh, unless the question specifies anyone so here it says use average method so we'll have to use the average method so while calculating the ben loan benefit uh, by using average method what we do is we take the highest loan during the tax year which in this case 84,000 pounds at the start of the year plus lowest loan during the tax year which will be so it was 84,000 pounds during the start of the year he paid 12,000 pounds twice so we'll deduct uh, 24,000 pounds out of 84,000 pounds which equals 60,000 pounds uh, and we'll apply the percentage which is official percentage is three percent so we'll apply three percent to that and we will deduct the actual interest paid which is 630 and the remaining amount is going to be our uh, loan benefit right uh, next one number five it says during the tax year 16 17 uh, john made personal pension contribution up to the maximum amount of available annual allowance including any uh, unused uh, amounts brought forward uh, from previous tax years and these contributions were in addition to the contributions he made uh, to serve a uh, plc's occupational pension scheme uh, it says see the note 2 so we already note uh, we already know what the note 2 was it was about uh, occupational pension scheme uh, so john has uh, not made any personal pension contributions in the previous tax years so although that he did not contributed anything toward the personal pension contribution in the previous tax years however in this current tax year he's he gone crazy about personal pension contribution so he said i want to do maximum personal pension contribution all right so what we can do is he has already contributed something towards occupational pension scheme he has used thirty thousand pounds in current tax year and he has used uh, thirty thousand in the previous tax years as well but remember the new rule which was introduced which i told you that there is something called tapered annual allowance now what tapered annual allowance do, does is it reduces our annual allowance uh, and it can reduce minimum to ten thousand pounds but what happens is that it depends on how much your uh, adjusted income is uh, and accordingly we will do some adjustments so here in our case uh, adjusted net income will have to calculate uh, by you know uh, by taking the by taking the remuneration and then deducting the uh, you know uh, deducting the contribution which he has made towards occupational pension schemes and then you know uh, taking the benefits as well so we'll have to see that how much his adjusted income is uh, assuming that if it is uh, you know obviously it is more than 150000 pounds when it is over 150000 pounds so for every pound for every 2 pounds in excess of 150000 pounds uh, annual allowance will be reduced by one pound we calculate it in the same way like we reduce our personal allowance so we will reduce this annual allowance in the same way all right so whatever the adjusted net income is that will be deducted out of 150,000 pounds and uh, uh, so it will reduce the uh, annual allowance as well so when when we reduce this annual allowance uh, we have to take care we'll have to be careful that uh, you know this uh, annual allowance can be reduced minimum to ten thousand pounds so it cannot go below ten thousand pounds all right 
So say for example if it is £10,000 then we'll have to see that he has already contributed £30,000 whereas he was allowed £10,000. But what he, can do, what, what, what he can do is he can use £10,000 from previous year and £10,000 from the pre uh, year before that. So it is £20,000 and because we can take three previous years so and £20,000 from the year before that. So 20, 40, uh, 30, 40. So he can use £40,000 uh, from the previous years. Uh, so 40,000 then ones, 10,000 for the current tax year, uh, total is 50,000 uh, pounds. So I'll, I'll, he is allowed 50,000 pounds in the current tax year, whereas he has already used towards the occupational pension scheme 30,000 pounds. So the remaining amount which he can contribute in his personal pension contribution is 20,000 pounds. All right, I hope you got my point. Uh, if you haven't, uh, then you can recheck the answers from the, you know, back of the uh, lecture, sorry, uh, exam kit. Now read the last note which it says in uh, note number six. It says John owns a holiday cottage which is uh, let out as furnished holiday letting. Although a letting does not uh, qualify as a trade under the furnished holiday letting rules, a property business profit for the uh, year ended was 16730. Now it is a property income so it will also be added uh, while we're calculating his uh, taxable Excuse me, while we calculate his taxable, uh, sorry, income tax liability. All right. Now, while calculating the income tax liability, please be, uh, be careful that he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a rich guy, so he has got a lot of income. Uh, so, you know, chances are that he will not get any personal loss at all because when someone's adjusted net income is in excess of 122,000 pounds, he will not get any uh, personal loss at all. Right. So chances are that he will not get any personal allowance at all. So I assume that you have already uh, completed this question and you have rectified your mistakes as well if you did any. Uh, now I want you to please go to question number 19 now please, which is relevant to pensions. We've already covered pensions in a couple, uh, couple of previous videos anyway. So we'll look now at the, uh, we'll now look at the question. Uh, question number in 19 where is it give me one second So I just start question 19, it's page 19, I think. Yeah, here's the question. So I'll do this question now. And now it is also practice of uh, a CBE style exam question. Now this is, uh, although this question which I, we are going to do now is um, a good practice question which for whichever uh, exam style you may choose. If you want to do it as PBE, it's up to you if you want to do it as CV, it's really up to you. But uh, this question will uh, give you a lot of, uh, you know, uh, know-how about the CV style question. All right. So let's start this question and uh, do it. The following scenarios uh, relate to the relate to question 63 to 67. So. These three scenarios are relevant to question 63 to 67. So we'll have to read these questions and we'll have to try to solve question 63 to 67. Now before reading the question, let's look at the, uh, before reading the scenario, let's look at the question. So it says which two of the following statements about relevant earnings are correct? So you'll have to see these, uh, you know, statements and tell him about the relevant earnings. So what were the relevant earnings? So relevant earnings we have studied in uh, uh, in a pension chapter. So it says individual can always make a pension contribution of 3600 pounds during 1616 even they do not have any relevant earnings in that tax year. Remember that uh, uh, we can contribute we, we, we can contribute higher off 3600 pounds and UK relevant earnings. So if you do not have any re learnings at uh, any re relevant earnings at all 
uh, definitely you can contribute 3600 pounds so this statement is true uh, the next one it says relevant earnings relate both to contributions to personal pension contribution and to occupational pension contribution so this statement is also right so we do not have to go far than that so a couple uh, first and second uh, statements are right so I will to uh, will choose the first one which is one and two now look at the next question which is question number 64 identify by clicking uh, on the relevant box when it says clicking and uh, so it shows us that it is a CB style question all right although it can be uh, you know it can be examined in the same way in PB as well but uh, it will not say you to click all right so it says identify by clicking on the uh, relevant boxes uh, in the table below whether each of the following statements about the annual allowance is true or false so uh, we'll have to see which one is false and which one is true uh, so first one it says employer contribution do not count towards the annual allowance so he's not right so it's false because uh, employer contribution also counts uh, towards annual allowance we have just seen in previous question which we have just done all right then it says annual allowance can be carried forward to carried forward for three years uh, to the extent that it is unused uh, in the tax year so he's right in this case then it says annual allowance is available even if the individual is not a member of the pension uh, in a tax year and so can be carried forward he's not right again and the last one it says if a, a tax relievable pension contribution exceeds the annual allowance there is a charge to income tax we know that there will be charge to income tax as a excess contribution and we will put it as uh, in the non savings income if he has exceeded the annual allowance all right uh, then it says uh, question number uh, 65 uh, what's Anne's income tax liability for tax year 16 17 so let's go back and see, read the scenario now now you can see that we have already done a couple of questions without even reading the scenario so that's what I was talking about that is a good exam technique so when you look at the question just read the requirements first and try to you know separate the requirements which does not need reading the scenario so try to solve them first then go to the other questions which read uh, which need to uh, which you, which want you to read the scenario all right so we'll, we are we have to now read the scenario relevant to Anne so it says a is self-employed uh, her taxable income for this year is 76,000 uh, pounds which was all trading income uh, and he has contributed 49,000 uh, pounds which is gross into his uh, into her uh, personal pension contribution pers uh, personal pension scheme between September 16 to March 17 and this was the second year uh, she had been member of the pension and she had an unused uh, allowance of 20,000 pounds brought, brought forward from 1516 right so it's very very easy I guess so what happens is that uh, his taxable income is 76,000 pounds so we'll have to calculate tax liability on that uh, he has uh, contributed 49,000 pounds in his pension now he was allowed uh, 40,000 pounds but he has exceeded the limit but he has already got uh, unused uh, 20,000 pounds so there will be nothing uh, th there is no problem at all all right now remember that uh, uh, you know the basic rate band and the higher rate band will be extended by the gross amount of personal pension contribution so gross amount of personal pension contribution is 49,000 pounds and uh, so his basic rate and higher rate will be extended by the gross amount so his income only falls in the basic rate band anyway so there is no need to you know do the higher rate because it will just be a basic rate because 49,000 pounds of the gross income will be added in his basic rate band all right so I hope now you can do it the next requirement number 66 what's the B's annual allowance charge uh, for 1617 so let's look at the B now uh, B is employed during the tax year 1617 uh, had taxable income of 160,000 pounds which is all employment income and B made contribution of 50,000 pounds into the personal pension contribution during the tax year this was the first year he had uh, been a member of the pension scheme in future his employer may contribute to uh, B's personal pension contribution all right so what would happen here is that his taxable income is uh, 160,000 uh, pounds and he has contributed 50,000 pounds towards his uh, um, you know personal pension contribution 
he has exceeded the limit by 10,000 pounds. So his, uh, uh, you know, the limit was uh, his limit was uh, 40,000 pounds, and but he has exceeded the limit uh, with 10,000 pounds. So his gross pension is 50,000 pounds. That is one point. Now his normal uh, limit is 40,000 pounds, uh, when his adjusted income uh, is less than 150,000 pounds. In this case, his adjusted income is also exceeded. So it exceeded by, uh, you know. 10,000 pounds, so 10,000 divided by 5, so his normal personal, uh, normal annual allowance of 40,000 will be reduced by 5,000 pounds, so he will get annual allowance of 35,000 pounds in this case, right? And, uh, you know, the basic rate band and higher rate bands will also be extended, uh, he will not get the, um, you know, yeah, basic rate and the higher rate band will also be extended. So let's look at the next requirement then. Last one is, uh, what is uh, C's tax relief on her pension contribution uh, for tax year 16 17? Bear me one second. Sorry. C. So C lets out uh, an unfurnished property uh, for the tax year 16 17. Her taxable income is 16 630, which was all property business income. Now C made a contribution of 8200. Uh, into the uh, personal pension scheme uh, during the uh, tax year 16 17. Uh, this was the first year that she had uh, uh, she had been a member of the pension scheme. So the question requirement will let's read the requirement again. Where is the requirement? It says uh, what is C's tax relief on her uh, pension uh, on her pension contribution for the tax year 16 17. So uh, how much he has contributed? He has contributed uh, uh, 8,200 pounds, uh, which is the gross amount. So we'll take 20% of that. That will be the benefit. All right. So that is end of our this question as well. Now, last question which I want you to do is uh, on page 23 of the uh, page. Uh, So the question 23, I think. Just bear me one second. Just a second, please. Thirty-five. Yeah, we've already done this one anyway. Yeah, it was John. All right. So that's it for this video. We have done a couple of questions as well. Uh, that's it, and uh, I will see you in the next video. And uh, I hope that uh, this video was helpful, especially to those candidates who did the question themselves and then rechecked with me, uh, because always. Uh, you know do it yourself first then watch me do it and then uh, you know recheck whatever I am telling you and then with the, with the, your with your answers like that you will be marking your own exam and it will give you a practice as well all right thank you very much and I will see you in the next video then good luck bye bye